Protests are happening all over Portland, the state and nationwide this 4th of July. Different groups have gathered at Pioneer Courthouse Square. Things have cleared out for now, but here's a look from earlier today. The celebration of our country's independence comes as America confronts its long history of denying equal rights to black, indigenous and people of color. Good evening, I'm Brittany Falkers. Let's face it, this 4th of July is unlike any other for a lot of reasons. Traditionally, we celebrate the birth of America's independence with fireworks, shows, parades, concerts, parties, but not this year. Independence Day falls in the intersection of two historic moments, a global pandemic and social unrest over police brutality and racial injustice. Morgan Romero talked to people about that reality change for their 4th of July plans. Down on the waterfront, it felt like any other Saturday, at least Saturdays during a pandemic. Bikers, joggers, even tourists from around the world and states nearby moseying around. So we decided to just road trip out mm -hmm. last minute yeah. and do, do some walks and just and get be a, in a new get a room. area. Israel. We're from Israel. But it's not any other Saturday. It's the 4th of July. It's my yeah. first time in America. Nothing. I was expecting fireworks like Katy Perry in the music video, but nothing. We were so disappointed. That's so we sad. <laughs> oh, there's not very many people out and about. Uh, people are, are staying in. They're staying uh, away from each other, uh, socially separated. Traditionally, the Waterfront Blues Festival takes over the Tom McCall Waterfront Park, drawing thousands from all over to the Rose City for a big old party. Oh, it's great. And they have world class musicians there. Yeah, it's just a great place to celebrate the fourth, really. But this year, organizers had to cancel festivities here to curb the spread of the coronavirus, meaning no live music, no fireworks. Oh, of course it's a bummer. Yeah, it's uh, we want to uh, be down here with the festivals, you know, drinking some IPA, listening to some uh, jazz music and uh, hanging out with all the other Portlanders. Significantly different this Re year. Really quiet. We're so surprised how quiet it seems today. All festivities look and feel different this 4th. Other popular events in our area were canceled too. Like the St. Paul Rodeo, Hillsborough Rotary Parade, and Fort Vancouver Fireworks Spectacular. Fourth of July is a lot of people I know's favorite holiday. You know, you have a barbecue, you enjoy your friends and family, you enjoy the crowds, the festivity, the fireworks, of course. It just doesn't seem the same. It's not going to be the same issue. You might still be celebrating with friends, hot dogs, and sparklers. Very small gathering of, you know, adults on the porch outside having a barbecue yeah. and just being very safe and being um, careful. It's, it's sad, but we can still celebrate because, you know, it's we're still it's we're still celebrating our independence and how great a country we really are. We are a good country. Yet on this day, we toast to freedom. It's tough to ignore the fact not everyone in this nation feels free. Proven by massive demonstrations across America calling for racial justice, equity and equality. I, I feel like there's a lot of growth that needs to happen in this country. Um, for me to feel like really um, proud of, what, of who, what we are and what we stand for. You know, I want to celebrate it, but I'm also like super conflicted about a lot of different things. So today is just about family. People I talked to down here earlier who you heard from are trying to keep some 4th of July traditions alive, like grilling outside or setting off some small legal fireworks. They are, however, trying to keep group sizes small, hang out outside for the most part, and stay distanced from their friends. Now, while Governor Kate Brown's face mask requirement applies to indoor public places, some still plan to wear their face masks while they're hanging out outside. Brittany. All right, Morgan, thank you so much. Well, yes, we're missing out on a lot of typical traditions, but there are still some special events to enjoy, like the drive in fireworks show at the Volcanoes Minor League Baseball Stadium in Kaiser. It's 20 bucks per vehicle. Doors open just moments ago at 5 p.m. And hey, how about a concert? The Alberta Rose Theater is live streaming concerts featuring local musicians Wednesdays through Sundays at 7 p.m. It's $20 to stream the show. Or maybe this weekend is a good chance to stop and smell the lavender. The Helvetia Lavender Farm and Market is still happening this year. 
with some modifications. But buy your $10 ticket in advance to explore all things lavender. It's happening this weekend and next from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Check out more ways to enjoy the holiday weekend safely at KGW.com. Now we want to spotlight one activist here in Portland. Derek Green has been out protesting and speaking to crowds, and he's been using his online platform to share his experiences and views as a black man in America. Ahead of the fourth, Green posted two videos on Instagram talking about the origins of the holiday. And he caught up with KGW's Cassidy Quinn to talk about how he plans to celebrate today by wearing black clothing. What, would you, what are you going to do for the 4th of July? Well, I'm going to be in all black. This is a this is the thing um, because to me it is the importance of the Fourth of July in the beginning the Declaration of Independence and like how radical that was and the fact that rebels actually won and actually disrupted an empire like those things are such huge ideals and like it's such a massive impact in history and it's like well we got to also look at that was the single point of America, pure, this pure ideal. And then from that moment to the current time, it has failed. Like it has failed. And so I'm gonna, you, we're gonna wear black because the understanding is that this is a failure and then we need to turn this around because the level of pain and suffering that is actually the day-to-day -day of such a majority of our people's lives in this country cannot be denied. And so it's like, to be American is to stand up against bullies and tyrants and people who are not doing what they're supposed to be doing and holding them accountable for what they're supposed to be doing. And so that's what we're doing. And we're going to wear black because we're holding those people accountable for the things that they're doing wrong. We have to change it. Absolutely have to change it. And so I'm wearing black. And you can watch their entire conversation. It's on the KGW YouTube page. About $10,000 worth of fireworks were stolen from a container at a fireworks stand on North Lombard outside of Fred Meyer in Portland. The stand was operated by the Peninsula Optimist Club. Someone allegedly broke the lock on the container and took multiple cases of fireworks. Two other fireworks stands run by the club were still operating today. Money raised by the fireworks stands actually helps pay for equipment and fees for kids to play sports. The theft is a huge blow to the Optimist Club. For this year, I mean, it, it's just very disheartening because there's just so much more time and effort put in by everybody involved this year. Now, the cases of fireworks have labels that say Peninsula Optimist Club and the Fred Meyer name and address on them. If you know anything about the fireworks theft, you're asked to call Portland police. Governor Kate Brown is pleading with Oregonians to take the pandemic seriously this holiday weekend, and it comes as cases continue to rise. The Oregon Health Authority reported 303 new cases today. That brings the state total to 9,930. Four new deaths were also reported. The governor has placed eight counties on a watch list where the spread has risen to, quote, alarming levels. Jefferson, Lake, Lincoln, Malheur, Morrow, Umatilla, Union, and Wasco counties will all be monitored by public health officials. And the governor could reimpose restrictions if those outbreaks aren't contained. Clark County Health is warning customers of a bar in Vancouver about a COVID-19 outbreak. So far, there are 18 cases connected to Orchard's Tap. Christelle Coomway talked with a Vancouver woman exposed because her roommate works there. The coronavirus outbreak connected to Orchard Tap Bar and Grill involves at least 18 employees and customers. Every single member of my house has tested positive and there's four of us. Heather Jones hasn't been there since the start of the pandemic. Two of her roommates work there. It affects more than just the people that were there. It affects people you live with. No matter how careful you're being, you can still pass it very easily. Heather and her roommates are all in their mid-30s. They have a broad range of symptoms. This including one who's entirely asymptomatic and one who is really not doing as well. Uh, he's got some breathing issues and we're waiting to get updated on his condition. As for her symptoms... I've had a really horrible, excruciating headache that's kind of hard to keep under control. Um, but other than that, my symptoms are pretty mild. Clark County Health started investigating the outbreak on June 29th after an employee tested positive for COVID-19. 
Now they want people who were at the bar from June 19th to 25th to be tested. The first thing that kind of gave us an inclination was the symptoms of, of my of my roommate. Uh, he was he developed a fever and immediately we we all kind of said, "Hey, go get tested." Currently, we're you know just stay, staying home and quarantining. We're you know not going anywhere. Orchard Step voluntarily closed on June 25th and remains closed. But Heather says anyone still going out to bars right now should be extremely careful because it can spread so easily. And not just to you being there, it can spread to your entire family, anyone you come in contact with. It's really dangerous. Health officials advise anyone who visited Orchard Tap Bar and Grill from June 19th through the 25th to get a coronavirus test, even if you're not showing any symptoms. Those people should also quarantine at home for 14 days from the last day of exposure. Christelle Kumwe, KGW News. Thank you, Christelle. And if you're out and about visiting bars and restaurants and other businesses around Oregon this weekend, you may see state workers checking in on those businesses. Governor Kate Brown is concerned with the increase in COVID-19 cases, and she's trying to keep the virus at bay. She's enlisted the help of Oregon OSHA and the OLCC. They'll be stopping in at businesses, checking on face mask usage, social distancing, and they'll be making sure nobody's being overserved at bars to make sure that those bars are closing on time, either 10 p.m. or midnight, depending on phase one or two. We are looking at this and taking action as an agency because we want to make sure that the health of all Oregonians is protected. If any business is out of compliance, they can be fined or cited or even issued a red warning notice that amounts to a temporary closure. Washington is going a step further with their mask enforcement. Governor Jay Inslee announced starting Tuesday, businesses are not allowed to serve customers who are not wearing face masks. Businesses that don't comply could be fined or forced to close. Coming up here at five, a car barrels into a crowd of protesters in Seattle, critically injuring two.